And this did it yesterday. We ended the uh, we ended yesterday's class and sort of the beginning, the beginning of the life of the two twins, <clears throat> famous twins, Jacob, Yaakov, and Esau. And it says we learned yesterday that Esav, they grew up, and Esav became a person that knew how to hunt, and he knew he was wandering around in the fields. And Yaakov was a simple person, and he was sitting in tents. Tents. What does it mean? Tents. It says Rashi, he was sitting in the tent of Shem and Aver. He was learning the Torah, how to serve God. In those days, there was only the seven Noahic commandments, but there were still a lot of, like as there are today. A lot of principles governing human conduct. So he was sitting and learning. <clears throat> he was doing that Yaakov. And Asa, he was Asa there. What does he mean? Rashi says he was a he didn't do anything positive. He was just looking around for whatever he rose up in his mind to do. So he would go hunting animals and birds and things like that. And it says the Yaakov was each Tom. Tom means that he was like, if you want to call it simple, wholesome. He wasn't looking for tricks. Ain't no bucky bakalilu. He didn't know how to hunt and all this stuff. Whatever he would say, that's what he meant. Misha enu kharif le ramot karutam. A person that doesn't really know how to trick other people, and he's not looking to trick other people. He's called a Tom. <clears throat> Here, the Kliyakar says that, what does it mean he was a Tom? He was a simple person. He was born circumcised, like the rabbis say. <clears throat> Therefore, he was able to keep himself away from forbidden sexual things. And he would sit, it was any time he had any urges or whatever to do something, so he would remember his circumcision, he was born circumcised. <clears throat> I mean, it must have been that Asaph was also circumcised afterwards. I mean, I think everybody was circumcised. At Anyways, he was born, <clears throat> and so therefore, he was circumcised, so therefore, he wasn't looking around for sexual Pleasures. That's why he said he was sitting in the tent and learning Torah. He wasn't always disturbed by his, um, how do you say, by his uh, strange thoughts, lurid thoughts. Oh, so it says Yaakov Yitzchak loved Asa because he tricked him. Said B'P. We learned what that meant a little bit. He would go and say, "Daddy, how do you take, you know, a tithe? I want to take a tithe." from my salt and from my straw. How do I do it? And Rivka, she loved Yaakov because Yaakov was always by her. He wasn't, Yaakov was always, not always trying to trick his father into getting, now we'll see what this whole business is. What do they care about what their father said? Well, it ends, we're going to, we're going to skip to that, but we're only going to do it tomorrow. I don't think we'll have time to do it today. That Yitzhak had the power to give blessings and his blessings really worked. And Asa really believed in these blessings. Asa really believed in this. And he really wanted the blessings of Yitzchak so he could use it for his nefarious means. Huh? He wanted to get more power. Okay, so Yitzchak, and we'll see later on that Yitzchak, he really wanted to bless Asa because, like we said yesterday, Yitzchak understood that even though Asa <clears throat> apparently and externally was a very um, uncontrollable person, but he knew that deep inside he was his son, first of all, and not only that, that was his job to fix him up. And so he figured he could fix him up by means of um, giving a big blessing. Asaph represents basically all of the non-Jews, anti-Semites, the church, all these things, and the job of the Jewish people is not to destroy them despite the fact that they want to destroy us. But the job is like Yitzchak wanted to do, and in fact, Rivka realized, we're going to see in the end, that it was Yitzchak's method of correcting Esau was not, 
not the, the right why. Yitzhak wanted to give Asa a quick fix. He figured he would give him a blessing and Asa would just come to himself and he would realize, you know, I'm going to serve the creator. But Rivka realized it was going to take a long time. And so it had to be done by Yaakov. Meanwhile, Asa, Asa was showing off his stuff. He's feeling his oats, like they say. And he was he knew he wanted to take over the whole world. So he also tricked Yitzchak. He tricked Yitzchak, his father. Asa sort of understood, realized that his mother, Rivka, was on to him. She realized that he it was forbidden to give him too much power. You know, you have to have gun control as far as Asa is controlled, considered anyway. And Asa was trying to con con convince his father Yitzchak, who Yitzchak was the head of the household, right? So he thought, we're going to see what happens later on. He goes blind, does it? Anyway, th that he should give him a blessing. So here we go. Okay. Vayazid Yaakov Nazid. Here, this is where we got up to yesterday. Yaakov, he made um, some, oh, here was a Okay, okay. So Yaakov was making this sort of porridge. And Esav came from the field. And he's looking around, you know, killing animals and all sorts of And he was tired. Uh, so Yaakov says, what is Yazid, Nazid? He was boiling some sort of a stew or something. And he was he was tired. From, Rashi says because he was from murdering. murdering he, was a, he was having a good time murdering all sorts of things, but he was tired. <clears throat> Here we have the Orachayim. He said, maybe because, why is it that Yitzchak loved <coughs> Oh. <clears throat> why is it that Yitzchak loved Esav? He says, maybe because Yitzchak, Esav was always going out hunting and he was bringing him food. So therefore, Shara, and because Yitzchak saw that Esav found favor in his father's eyes because he was feeding him, so Yitzchak decided to take up the art of cooking. Bishel Tavshilin. So he was also cooking in order to also feed his father. And then father, his father would like him like Esav, like he liked Esav. But it ended up that it worked better than he thought. Comes in Asa, and Asa says, "Hey, I'm really tired. Give me some of your uh, this. If not, you're going to see. I'm going to die." So Yaakov could have said to his brother Asa, "Oh man, you know, I would really like to give you some of this stuff, but you know, I need it for for something else." And just let Asa die. You know, just let him die, and then he wouldn't have any problems. But that is not the job or the goal of Yaakov, the Jewish people, to kill Esau and to be victorious, but what to harness the power of Esau and to wake him up. So here we go. But Yomar Esau says to Yaakov, give me that red stuff that you're making because I'm really tired. Therefore, his name was called Edom. That's why his name is called Edom. And we're going to see, okay, he gives two explanations here. Halitani, what does it mean, Halitani? means I'll just open up my mouth and you'll pour it in. Uh, I'm so, Esav was like so hungry from this red stuff. They, it's, Rashi says that these were red lentils. This was the day that Abraham died. Why did Abraham die this day? So they would not see Esav, his grandson, go out to become evil. And this is not the old age that God, if so, it wouldn't be the old age that God promised him. God said, you're going to die in a seva tova, in a good old age. So God said, listen, if Abraham sees how evil Esav is, so his last five years are going to be destroyed. So, you know, 175 is also not bad. That's also good old age. God took, seven, eight, God took five years off of Abraham's life. Huh? He should have lived 180. Yitzchak lived 180 years. And Abraham lived only 175 years. Now, Yaakov was boiling this food in order to increase his mourning. 
Yaakov was mourning for his grandfather, excuse me one second, for his grandfather. Why did he, of all things, why was he boiling lentils? Because they're round, and it says that a mourning for someone is round. Why is it round? First of all, it's like a cycle that goes in the world. Everybody's going to die eventually. And there's another one that Rashi, another Rashi version, Rashi that Rashi also says that uh, just like lentils are round, they don't have any opening. There's no cracks or openings in them. So also when a, somebody in a family dies, so there's nothing that you can say, at least immediately, that will explain it. It's the same thing with eggs. Some people, there's a custom to eat eggs. The mourners eat eggs because they have got no mouth. What can they say, you know, about the person that is dead? It really doesn't make any sense that people die and totally unnecessary. Okay. So we got over here, Lama. Oh, yeah, I just did that. Oh, here we got a good one. Here we got it. So, but Yomar Isab said, Give me some of this food. Ya Ramban says the food was red from these. In any case, it was whatever it was red. It says, therefore, they called his name Edom. That's what he says. They called his name Edom. Why do they call his name Edom? They were laughing at him, right? Whenever he would come into the bar or whatever he would come and says, oh, here comes Red. Hi, Red. Why? Because he sold, here he says, he sold, he sold his first birthright for just from for a bunch of red beans, right? That's well, a pretty stupid thing. What did he do that for? He was the firstborn to Jacob to, to Yitzhak. Yitzhak was, was a very famous person and everything. And he sold his firstborn for what? For a bowl of red beans. So maybe there's a lot of beans, maybe it was really tasty. But still, they, they don't sell your firstborn. So everybody laughed at him. That's what the the uh who is it? The Orachimes, the Ramban. That's what the Ramban says. Here's a good one. The Balaturim, he says, Hal itani na mean hadom, right? Asaph said to Yaakov, Hal itani na mean hadom. Give me to eat, pour down my throat, please from. It says these are the letters of Haman. Hey, Mem Nun. Who was Haman? Haman was the, the enemy of the Jews that wanted to destroy in the days of, of Mordechai. Remember, that's a whole miracle of Purim. It says these are the first letters of Haman. To tell you that just the way that Yaakov, he acquired from Asa, the firstborn, the, the birthright. Also, Mordechai, he got the power from Haman. Why? Lavod bepat lechem. And served just for bread. There was the meal, right? They made a meal over there, and etc. <clears throat> okay. By Yomer Yaakov, so Yaakov said to Esav, he saw his, his opportunity. So Yaakov said to his brother Esav, Michra kayom et bechoras chali. Sell me your birthright. Huh? Then you can say, here's a Jew, a clever Jew. He's fixing it. But Esav was also a Jew. It was his twin brother. Right, so we see there's all sorts of Jews. So here we go. It says, sell me your first birth, your birthright. Okay, sell me your first right. It says, sell me. What does it mean? Sell me today. It's sell me now. It says, I want you to sell it to me just like the day is clear that it's daytime. So I want the sale to be a clear sale. It says, sell me your firstborn. It says, the service of the firstborn. <clears throat> Said Yaakov, what is the firstborn? It used to be before the sin of the golden calf that the firstborn, they were supposed to be the priests in the holy temple. <clears throat> but when there was the sin of the golden calf, so the Levites did not sin, but the firstborn did. So God took away their, so it says, but before that, they were supposed to serve in the temple. So Yaakov said, my brother Asaph, he's like really a bad guy. He's a liar, a murderer, a cheater. We'll see later on. These stole women from under the under, under the wedding canopy. Stole them from anyway. So Yaakov said, "This evil man should not be uh, the one to serve God. So I have to buy it from him. Buy a purchase from him." And here we have the Safrano. Let's see if we can get here. It says that Yaakov said to he said to himself. Look at this Ace of. He came back and he's so knocked out because he's going around hunting and killing, right? And therefore he's so tired. 
if he is so tired that he doesn't even recognize what this nazir is. He said, give me this red stuff. What did he say? Tell me Adom Adom, give me from this red stuff. He didn't say, give me the Nazid Arashim, give me lentils. He said, give me from this red, red stuff. Because if he's so tired that he doesn't even know how to call this, he's just so tired, just give me that red stuff, I want to eat it. So therefore, all he knows is just the color of it. So therefore, his name was called Adom, red. Right? If he says, he, that's only, he was so hungry, that only knows just the color, he couldn't even recognize. So he can't serve in the holy temple. And therefore, he got his nickname, Red, because he sold it for this red stuff, right? All he knew that was red, he was so, and he say confused, because he works hard. If he's so connected to the world, that he's willing to sell his thing, so he can't serve in the Holy Temple. <clears throat> like a first one. Mm -hmm. That's what it says here, okay. A Yomer Esav, Esav said, I'm going to go to die. Why should I have this firstborn? What do I need this firstborn for? Here he says, what does it mean he's going to die? He was so tired I'm so tired that I'm going to die. So, you know, Yaakov could have said, okay, you know, it's not, 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 my, not my problem. You know, I'm pretty hungry. You know what? I'll make up some new stuff for you. Okay, just wait a couple minutes. And he's dying over there. Yaakov could have figured out some way to kill him. But that was not Yaakov's job. Why did he say, I'm going to die? Says Rashi. Rashi has a little bit different explanation. Not that he was so tired he was going to die. He said, Esav said, <clears throat> what, what exactly is the service of being a first of the firstborn? The first one to work in the holy temple. So Yaakov said, well, for instance, there's all sorts of punishments, and there's also, uh, if you don't do right, you could die. Right? You go into the Temple unpre unprepared, you go in drunk or something like that, the punishment could be death. And like we learn, like uh, in the Sanhedrin, learns all these laws. So, Elohim Shabbat Misa, these are things that a, a person that is drunk with wine, a person that goes in with his, a coin, a priest that goes in drunk, or he goes in, his, uh, his hair is unkempt. So, <clears throat> Aesop said, hey, you know, I don't want that. Come on, you know. I mean, I can understand if I die, like fighting a lion or something like that. But I'm going to die just because I drunk, drank, you know, one beer too many or something going into the whole, who knows the Holy Temple? Because I'm going to go and die by means of this stuff. It's not worth dying for the Holy Temple. If so, what do I care if I'm the firstborn or not? You know, I want to give me some of that. I'd rather, you know, I got the best part of the deal. I got some nice beans, red beans. And Yaakov let him risk his life in the Holy Temple, you know, his, his, his offspring. Okay. So it says, Vayomer Yaakov, Yaakov said, swear to me today. And he swore to him, and he sold his firstborn ship, his firstborn ship, whatever it is, to Yaakov. And it says in Yaakov, <clears throat> he gave to Esau bread and these uh, beans, stew, and he ate and he drank, and he got up and he left. And he despised the firstborn. Hey, the Torah tells us how evil he was, that he hated, he, he despised serving God. He could have said, you know, no, the firstborn right is in the right place. You know, yeah, let Jacob serve it. What do I need it for? He said, nah, it's terrible. I didn't need it anyway. It was awful. You know, <clears throat> the, the so therefore it says that it, it shows that he really didn't want to serve God in the first place. Okay, let's go through a little bit quickly. I don't know if we're going to have time to do this, but we'll do whatever we can. Come on. All right, here we have the interesting story that um, here, let's see, there we go. Okay. So it says that there was another famine and like it was in the days of Abraham and Yitzchak went down to Abimelech, took his wife, Rivka, they already got married, and went down to Abimelech uh, Gerara. Okay, so what happens over here? God appeared to Yitzchak and said, "Don't go down to Egypt. Don't go down to Egypt. Don't do what your father did. Your father, when there was a famine, he went down to Egypt and he was justified." The Ramban said he he should have that Abraham should have <clears throat> defied his desire, his hunger, and stayed. But anyway, God says to Yitzchak, 
don't go down to Egypt like Abraham did. Live in the land of Israel that, that I'm going to tell you. Because it says, why? Because Yitzhak, he thought he would go down like in the days of his father. God said, no, you can't do it. After you went to be sacrificed on the altar, as now you became pure. You're like a pure sacrifice, and you can't go outside of the land of Israel. The outside of the land of Israel is not holy enough for you. So God said to Yitzchak, stay in this land. I'll be with you. I'll bless you. you to you and your offspring, I'm going to give you all these lands. <clears throat> so here we see that God promised it to Abraham. Now he's promising to Yitzchak. I'll do, I'll fulfill the oath that I prayed to Abraham. I want to just go through this quickly. I'll give your, I'll multiply your seed like the stars of the heaven. I'll give you and your offspring all of these lands and your <clears throat> speed, your offspring will bless the whole, all the nations of the world will be blessed from you. <clears throat> oh, that's pretty good. That's the job of the Jews is to bless everybody. Why? Because Abraham, listen to what I said, he did all my commandments. From here we learn that Abraham did all of the commandments that uh, are in the Torah. It says, La vi Torah that even Abraham did all the commandments before they were given. The logical ones, the chukim, the illogical ones, he did everything. Abraham knew everything, and he passed this down to his son, Yitzchak. Okay, you might ask, how, how in the world did he know it? So the answer is the world was made <clears throat> from the Torah. And the world, there is absolute good and absolute bad. And that's what the Torah has. So Abraham, <clears throat> because of his purity and his devotion, so he revealed what this absolute good and absolute bad is, and he passed it down to Yitzhak. So Yitzhak lived in Gror. And the people asked about his wife and she said hey she's pretty nice you know maybe we'll take her who is this lady and so Yitzchak said it's my sister because he was afraid to say that it's his wife because they would kill him she was Rivka was very beautiful so if he said it's my sister so they'll come and maybe they'll start to listen maybe you'd like to sell her or maybe you'd like to you know make a deal the king will give you what do you say about uh, he's willing to give you money Huh? What do you say about uh, eighty billion dollars? Huh? How does that sound to you? Eighty billion. So meanwhile, Yitzchak could at least buy time. At least he could do something. But if you said it's my wife, so he's not going to sell his wife. What? How did? They, how can they get his wife away from him? Very simple. Make her into a widow. If she's a widow, then you know they'll mourn for a little bit, and then. So he said, these guys are going to kill me for sure if I say it's my wife. So I'm going to say <clears throat> that it's. My sister. So it came down. And Avi Melech, who is the king, he looked from the window and he saw Yitzchak Mitzachekim Rivka. So he saw Rivka. He said he was. <clears throat> he saw them having sexual intercourse. Huh? So he said, one second. I thought he said, this was my sister. There's other people asking, how could in the world could he have done such a thing like that? And, and there's there are definitely answers. According to some things, it wasn't that he was Tashmish. I mean, he says sexual intercourse. He was just Orachaim says that he was hugging her and caressing her in such a way that a sister would not do to a a brother would not do to a sister. And especially it was in the daytime. In the daytime says the person not supposed to have have sexual relations with his wife in the daytime, especially when no one can see. So there are all sorts of questions, how could it possibly be? Nevertheless, <clears throat> Avi Melech called the Yitzchak and said, hey, this is your wife. Why did you tell me it was your sister? And Yitzchak said, well, I said, maybe you're going to kill me because of her. So Avi Melech said, what did you do to us? One of the people almost had sexual relations with your wife, who was Echad Am, was him. Rashi said, Echadam, that's him, the special one, me. In other words, he said, you still have a so you would have brought on us a big sin. And Avi Melech commanded the people, say, anyone who touches this man uh, is going to be punished. He's going to die. Punish death, punish him death. And Yitzchak uh, planted in that year, in the, in the, 
<coughs> and he found in that year 100 times uh, the produce what it was usually. Right, 100 times. That the everybody he has said, how much will this land produce? And everyone said, oh, it'll produce 100 bushels of wheat. And by him, it produced 10,000 bushels of wheat, 100 times more. So therefore, everybody said, hey, so he became very, very great. And <clears throat> very, very great. And he had a lot of sheep. He had a lot of this and servants. And uh, now, okay, now we, now we get to the thing about the wells. All of the wells that the servants of his father in the days of Abraham dug, so the police team uh, hid them. The police team that was the, that was Abimelech. He was the king of the police team, so they covered him over. Abimelech said to Yitzchak, "Lech me ibtanu, get get away from us. Ki atzam tami You're too successful. But you're too successful." You're making me like small. Or Achaim says, you're, you're, you're more successful than I am. You have more money than the king does. The, the, the king is, is be, you're shaming the, the king. Right? You're, you're shaming me. He said, get out of here. Leave me and get away. So Yitzchak left. And he camped in a place called Nachal Gerar. He stayed there. Okay, here we go. Ready? So Yitzchak dug a well of water. And that was he, re, he opened up the wells that were in the days of his father. And that the police team had closed up, like we said before, after father. And he called the names of them like his father called names. Okay? So and that was one thing, the names that his father called. These were the wells that his father. Went. Now he dug more wells. Now you have to realize every time he dug a well, this was a big benefit to everybody because, like we said before, this irrigated the land. You could make a, a whole city over there. Okay, the servants of Yitzhak dug a well, Benachal, in a river, and they found over there that there was a living well of living water. They dug for a well and they found living water there. Huh? I want to go through this quickly because we're going to do the Kli Yucker, but I don't think we're going to do it today. We're going to do it tomorrow, but maybe I'll do it shortly. We'll see. So they, they dug a well, and the shepherds of Grar, they came along, and they made a war, a battle with shepherds of Yitzchak, and they said, hey, this water belongs to us. And so they called the name of this first well Asik. Strife. That was the name of the first one. First one was called Strife. So the servants of Yitzchak, together with Yitzchak, they dug, dug another well. And the servants of Grar, they also came and made a war on it. But And they called this one Sitna. They called it Hatred. That's the name of the well. Second well. <clears throat> and so they left. They didn't want to make a war. They went and they dug another well, a third well. And this, there was no war. They didn't, no one contested this well. And they called it Rehovot, wideness. Ki atahir because now God has widened us and made us fruitful in the land. And we'll see, maybe we'll do this tomorrow, but the beautiful... Kliyakar. Kliyakar was Rev Lunchitz, Rev Shlomo, Yehuda Shlomo Lunchitz. He lived like 400 years ago. It was in the time of the Maralmi Prague. He was in the same time of the Maralmi Prague. So he said these three wells that were dug are hints at the three temples. The first and the second, of course, were destroyed. And the third one will be built by the Mashiach. And that will last forever. That will be wide. And you know what? We'll do this to give it justice. Let's do this tomorrow. So signing off. Hope to see you tomorrow. And we'll learn about how 
what is the correspondence between these three wills, <clears throat> argument, hatred, and wideness corresponds to the three temples. Shalom of Rachasi, tomorrow at 8.15 in the morning.